Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Spotlight. I'm your host, Nick Armstrong. Now, when I'm not dropping random objects into first-year chemistry drop boxes, I'm forever adventuring across campus to bring you the latest news on the people, research, and events here in the Faculty of Science at McMaster University. Today, we're in the Arthur Bournes Building, home of the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology. Let's see what's going on. Dave, to begin, you have me holding this picture. What is this picture? This is actually a picture of a glass bulb containing xenon difluoride. For the longest time, they referred to the noble gases as the inert gases. However, they found they do react, and since then, they've become known as the noble gases. What we had here was fluorine and xenon were condensed into this bulb, and they were allowed to react in a window such that UV light caused a reaction. Here's another noble gas compound. It's xenon tetrafluoride. Xenon tetrafluoride, when it reacts with water, will ultimately form xenon trioxide. You get a transient yellow species formed, which I'm just going to demonstrate here. I've got a beaker of ice here. And I'm just... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jeez, you got to give me a warning. On a side note, do you think if Prince William uh, breaks wind, they call it noble gas, if you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Oh, yeah. He's a royal, royal yeah, gas, royal, royal gas. gas, sorry. Not noble. My mistake, my yeah. mistake. We recently put out a paper on xenon dioxide. It's received a lot of attention and has even become uh, subject to a cover article. Is that lab coat standard issue? No, actually, mine's a lot dirtier. If you're more like a man in your yeah, dirty lab coat, yeah. Exactly. It's like you're it, going shows, to work, it shows you know? you're actually doing That's something. That's right. That's yeah. right. You can always tell a man by his lab coat. You, sir, have eaten a hot dog for lunch, I can see. Gary, thanks a lot for making time for us today. Could you explain to the good folks at home who this is? This is Henri Moisson. Henri Moisson discovered uh, the element fluorine in 1886. And uh, this poster here was displayed in Paris in 1986. And I happened to somehow get a copy of this. You, you stole it, you stole it. Well, okay, okay. All right, let's be, you know, let's be honest. Let my son do it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hot parenting tip right that's, there. That's <laughs> get right. your kids to steal, all right. That's right, yes. Uh, anyway. Moisson managed to liberate fluorine from HF by carrying out a, an electrolytic experiment. Now I have here a photograph of his original electrolytic cell. Ooh, that's Actually nice. A, a platinum vessel here. And he had two electrodes in this ve vessel, which contained anhydrous HF, which was doped with some potassium fluoride to make it uh, conductive. So he passed a current through this uh, medium and liberated fluorine on one side and H2 on the other side. And this configuration was very important because fluorine and hydrogen cannot be mixed. As we will see in the demonstration, this can result in a conflagration. We'll prove that to you momentarily. That so means explosion, is that right? Explosion, explosion. yes, yeah, yes, right. yes. Yeah. Dave, what are we about to see? Well, typically when you're doing a first year chemistry demonstration, you burn hydrogen and oxygen. Now we're going to be doing a slight variation on this today. We're going to be burning hydrogen in fluorine gas. My supervisor is going to be doing this demonstration because he really enjoys uh, horsing around a little bit. Hi, Gary. Can't All right. I like. Hey, I like your getup. This is exciting stuff. Okay. So what we have here is a hydrogen-filled balloon. Yep. And there's a trace of oil, pump oil, on the surface of it. Excellent. So what we're going to do is shoot a jet of fluorine gas onto the top of the balloon. All right. And at that juncture where it meets the oil, it'll burst into flame and burn through the balloon membrane. It will burst into flame. Hopefully it will react and explode. It may not be a very loud detonation, but we'll see. And this will produce uh, hydrogen fluoride. Now, should we be worried at all back over here? Should we be worried about the flame? Well, you may want to stand back just a wee bit. Ah! You all right, Nick? <laughs> Nick? <laughs> Woo! Just got to uh, go change my pants. <laughs> I went to this meeting in uh, 1986 to celebrate the centenary of the discovery of fluorine, and the French issued a postage stamp, which uh, depicts Mosson, and it also 
depicts a chemical reaction, but unfortunately the chemical reaction that's written is not HF going to fluorine and hydrogen, they wrote H2 plus F2 going to HF, which is obviously not what Moisson wanted to do, it's actually the opposite. So this is a philatelic blunder. So the French had a faux pas, so to speak. Yes. They f F2 and H, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Delving into the world of fluorine, what are some of the uses of your research? Well, first we do fundamental work, so we don't really shoot for a particular application. So okay. we're, we're interested in broadening and deepening knowledge of fluorine chemistry, and particularly de noble gases. As well, this type of chemistry is very challenging, and it offers splendid opportunities for very deep and broad training for students. And the students that go forward from our lab have demonstrated this by placing very well in industry and academia. But aside from that, sometimes there's spin-offs. Okay, these are things we can't predict. They may happen 10, 20 years, maybe 30 years down the line. This is like in TV, when a character on a popular show Not has quite. another show. No? Not okay. quite, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm reaching, I'm reaching. Spin-offs in science are basically taking fundamental work mm -hmm. and finding actually a very important use for it, application for it. And um, in the case of noble gas chemistry, one interesting spin-off, which is a current topic, is xenon difluoride. We looked at the picture of xenon difluoride here yes. a few minutes ago. And xenon difluoride is now a very important agent for etching microelectronic circuits. Okay. So it's actually probably the most important one at the moment. Wow. So this is a, a use that was never dreamt of when this material was first synthesized. Mm -hmm. It's also used for preparation of uh, some radiopharmaceuticals, which are used for imaging, what we call positron emission tomography, for imaging, for example, the human brain. Wow. So there are some very important um, uh, drugs that are produced uh, for that purpose, and xenon difluoride uh, is also being f uh, used in the pharmaceutical industry because it can very cleanly fluorinate molecules and not leave residues behind, wow. which are sometimes a problem uh, when it comes to getting a drug approved. Something like 25% wow. of all drugs contain wow. at least one fluorine. So you're telling me I should invest in the fluorine uh, market? Yeah, fluorine yeah. futures, definitely. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> In terms of, then, your work with fluorine, what specifically are you looking at? Well, uh, one of our interests is uh, actually developing some chemistry that's related to problems that are associated with the nuclear industry. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, that work we can't really speak about because it's proprietary. I understand. But Do you want to turn off the camera for, for a second? Oh, really? That's interesting. Huh. Gary just told me everything about the research he's involved in right now. It's about the, oh my God. <laughs> this brings up another point that fluorine chemistry is very, very important in the nuclear industry. For example, the enrichment of uranium. This is all done with fluorine chemistry. Hmm. UF6, uranium hexafluoride, hmm. is the, the chief agent uh, in, in enrichment and reprocessing of uranium fuel rods. So, um, well, that's very important. Very noble cause, I would say. Very noble. Yes. Thanks. Get it? <laughs> Last question. It's a fun game we play here on the Spotlight. It involves you filling in this blank. Science is... All about discovery. Science is... The pursuit of knowledge. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Spotlight. To see more episodes of the Spotlight or to find out more about what's going on in the Faculty of Science, visit us at www.science.mcmaster.ca slash spotlight. Until next time. I'm your host, Nick Armstrong. Take care, everybody.